Okay, we, this is the last domain. Hello everyone. So welcome to domain 12 related technologies and strategies. We have explored a range of topics related to cloud security, including organizational management, identity and access management, security monitoring, network workload, application and data. In this section, we'll turn our attention to two overarching perspectives that influence many of these topics. First is zero trust. It is a strategic cybersecurity approach with the potential to address both cyber and cloud security. The second one, artificial intelligence, particularly through large language models, is rapidly involving many aspects of IT and security. So come, let's deep dive. So this is the last domain, domain 12, related technologies and strategies, domain 12. Uh, the learning objective for this domain will be to discuss the benefit of integrating AI into threat and vulnerability management for cloud security, explain the role of artificial intelligence in cloud security, and identifying the key components of a zero trust cyber security approach. Okay, zero trust. Uh, so zero trust, you have to understand as it actually is an approach. Okay, it's not a tool. You have to understand it's an approach which actually rejects unfounded source of trust. So everything has to be trusted and retrusted, re-verified, okay? So zero trust is not about identifying general attacks and controls, but by identifying the protect surface. When I say protect surface, it could be your data application, access and services that needs protection. But the way you do it, uh, there are ways or the objectives are something that the organization should not trust or should not have inherently trusted like we do in our traditional environment. That means you have to trust but then every time you have to reissue a token, uh, you don't open your identity in public so easily. It's not something which is known to everyone, okay? Again, zero trust architecture is about streamlining the access. You can think about just in access or just in time authorization. You have just a time authorization and you've done authentication and authorization and then you move forward, right? Okay, you need to have strict access controls, continuous authentication, remember the word, continuous authentication you have to re-authenticate and implement least privilege principle across your network and infrastructure very important so it focuses on the perimeter around application and identity so that means you have an application you have an identity you use the identity uh, which is authenticated and authorized but you have to reiterate or rerun this process again and again right and then you don't trust by default that's very important to understand and user system program will only have necessary access to perform their task. The key thing is you have to reduce attack surface and recover from security incident. That's what you or that's your main or the primary objective of a zero trust. So in this diagram, you will see zero trust pillars and maturity model. I got this in from the book. It is from the CISA zero trust maturity model. I'm doing or uh, seeing this for the very first time, but I really uh, understand this is how the pillars are defined how they're actually uh, cutting across uh, all these verticals, okay? And what are the layers? So we'll talk about optimal, advanced, initial, and traditional as we move forward in the next slide. But let's first color, cover the pillars, which is identity, devices, network, application, workloads, and data, okay? And then how this visibility, analytics, automation, and governance play a part in this. Okay, users, as we mentioned, securing, securing limiting, and enforcing access to person, non-person, federated identities, which all encompass uh, use of identity and credential. So use a multi-factor authentication. So limit your user, limit your identities and create whatever is needed. There should be an identity for a person, tangible, non-tangible or systems uh, for, for them to access, okay? Devices, you have to ensure that there is security hygiene uh, in an input access to the control. That means whenever you have a device which is connecting should be, you, you should check their hygiene, okay? Security hygiene, again, Network plays a very important role. It has to be segregated, highly segregated. That means uh, you have each and every zone for different entities and then when they connect to each other, they are isolated, but then they, again, as I said, authenticate and authorize to get access and get the things moving, okay? Applications need to be protected, but when they are compromised, can be, you know, they can be source of a malicious traffic. So you have to understand what are the workloads you have, what are the applications you have, okay? Data, wherever that is your crown jewel, you need to store store the data, but you have to protect all the elements of the data. Very important. Now, coming to the last three horizontals, if you see the building blocks, which is the governance, automation, and orchestration, and visibility analytics. The so visibility and analytics is you have to understand, you have to 
continuously detect uh, any kind of you know abnormalities you have to adapt to dynamic uh, security policies if you see something do you allow it do you deny that all right then you see automation orchestration more of your cloud implementation is all automated so you have to understand uh, how you can leverage on that how you can actually quick quickly scale up or scale up and scale down right and how how you can bring it uh, with an isolation so you have to understand governance actually ensure that your risk your business objectives your it perspectives they all are aligned together so all in all governance plays a very important role in all of them but in a zero trust it it has to step up and then you have to understand that you have a zero trust applicability policies which you have to define which doesn't happen in a normal traditional environment okay okay so as we were talking about the four stages or the four maturity models or four stages we can say in a CISA zero trust maturity model okay and how it helps any organization so the lowest the lowest one you see is a traditional one tradition is typically you have firewalls your static policies uh, there are no dynamic policies there is not enough enough isolation but as you move upward then you have the initial stage where you have identity management you have separate identities for for everything and then then you have device security which is introduced but the key thing is network segmented or the network is segmented quite a lot okay again when you say advanced you are actually doing a continuous monitoring continuous control continuous implementation orchestration and then you have dynamic controls in place that means you can make a decision on the spot or or while you're driving it when it comes to optimal this is where which is the top maturity which talks about uh, functions like identity management and network segregations are totally adopted and automated that's the key thing okay you have an identity which has been created on the fly it accesses you document it you have an anomaly you have a baseline defined reaching to optimal level is is quite difficult i think initial and advanced is something um, in my my view is the best uh, an organization can improve or achieve again this uh, picture is from the book itself uh, table number 4 which talks about uh, a security domain and then corresponding zero trust principles so when we talk about organizational management it's actually the enterprise uh, security and uh, connectivity strategy to implement the zero trust and then it has to be a culture it is a cluster culture as i mentioned zero trust is is more of a approach of cyber security it is not something a tool we have okay so it's a culture you have to adapt to so you don't have a trust okay identity and access management you have to have continuous phishing resistance mfas multi-factor authentication uh, with context-based authorization that means it has uh, do you have a relevance or 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 the devices should have an access or these all requests has to be meaningful and context-based right then security monitoring you monitor almost everything you presume you are debriefed so your mindset has to change you are not uh, reactive to it you are active proactive you think that you are already breached and then you keep monitoring all those details right then you all detect suspicious activities early and moreover dynamically adjust the access that means you see something which is a hindrance to your process or then you actually have to make an adjustment on the fly again network you go for micro segmentation you separate or lose the couple all your applications okay then you need to have a network architecture which is software defined definitely but it has to be isolated right then you have your workloads these workloads uh, should have the integrity uh, verification when they boot up they should not have a malware then there should not be any data uh, you know exfiltration in terms of it has been monitored you have tools in place you have policies in place you have dlp solutions in place and then you have uh, access control for your workloads also you know zero trust don't don't just trust your workloads whatever has been done by a specific workload is legit you have to keep questioning that and keep validating that again comes to application always use fine grained uh, privileges or least privileges and uh, with separation of duties right that means you keep rotating the rules or roles and then limit user permissions and uh, minimize uh, uh, data re required data access and functionalities right again data your crown jewel classify very important you have to understand what is sensitive non-sensitive public data right how you classify that on that basis you do the protection then you have to monitor the data what is at rest is it encrypted non-encrypted in transit also you have to ensure that 
in use when the data is in use is it is it actually safe secure okay so all in all all these are the key principles you can make note of this uh, kind of important slides yes and no uh, i found it so I, I thought i will just put a slide for that yeah okay we have been talking about artificial intelligence it is something which has revolutionized the the entire industry there are a lot of use cases for this nowadays you have a you have a bot the ai services are and actually helping you to craft images and and do a lot of things right but again ai presents a dual role in cloud security it can be utilized to enhance the cloud security measures but it also poses a risk as an emerging attack tool so that means your ai actually can work against you because it holds the data it uh, it has most of the information which can you know be used against the organization right then now moving to what are the four areas or categories uh, work related or work so i have something as AI is a service for consumption, full SaaS. That means is AI is provided as a complete ready to use service by the cloud provider. The cloud server provider will actually have already trained or built in uh, models for you to use, okay? What are the controls you have? Allow only approved services or uh, data privacy, allowed approved data, uh, track prompts and results. So these are the key things, but, but it's a full service which is provided by the cloud service provider. Okay, the next, uh, I would say is AI as a service. It's a past model, foundation model hosting. Okay, so cloud servers, pro, cloud provider will only provide you with the underlying infrastructure, but you uh, have to develop the model and application built to the consume customer, right? So it gives organization more control and customization. They can build their own solution. They can build upon it and all that. Then the thing is the security controls they have to put is they have to secure the training data. Because they are the one who are training the, the the model, so they have to secure that data. You have to understand how to do the integration of the application, how how it will be integrated to your organization, different applications, right? Then your development environment or deployment environment, you have to secure that part. You have to secure your user and access because you are the one who is governing everything. And again, also defend against adversarial attacks like injection or jailbreak or or could be manipulating of your would say any kind of you know model itself right then next comes in bring your own model okay that's another thing cloud as a workload hosted for ai so organization develop their own ai models from scratch and deploy off the shelf models and simply use cloud as a hosting that means i build something i just host it and then i distribute as a SaaS as a service or as a service itself okay so cloud just provide the raw compute resources but it's your model your design you have done the training and you are the one who is owning it and then you are the one who is actually making it available for the general public use okay the last model is ai enhanced security tools this is very important very key slide i would suggest take a note of this one so ai is being embedded into various security products nowadays okay to make it more smarter more efficient how it is done is like you have machine learning you have uh, model models which are being prepared they can do the analysis they can do the threat detection they can do the correlation they can actually even do an incident response okay if you have a playbook they can actually do a posture assessment a security posture what are the configuration either through the baselines they can so so it does a lot of things for you so source code analysis malware analysis okay they can also go to a level where they can do your risk assessment they can do a risk prioritization if you have a high medium low risk or which one to action how to action that and entitlement management so all in all, nowadays AI is being used in a lot of security tools and products. I found this one is something new. Uh, you can explore a couple of other videos. Okay, so that calls off uh, ends the the 12 domains. And uh, thanks for your patience. Thanks for your time listening to this and giving your positive feedbacks, uh, commenting on that. Uh, if you find it useful, definitely. Uh, if you need anything else for me to cover, just let me know. But uh, this is all I have to deliver. And thanks full to you or to every one of you and uh, hope uh, you get success in your exam. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay, I want to thank you again. So uh, like and subscribe the channel and uh, I will be adding more videos soon. Thanks a lot.